So, I've been seeing a lot of jewelry trays online. Every time I see them, I'm like, I want to make that. I can make it. It's going to be easy. I got this. The overconfidence in me is just crazy. I don't know. <laughs> Why I'm always so overconfident in my artistic abilities, I think I'm just determined and videos make things look a lot easier than they are. I've actually already made some of the bases of the trays. So I started out with some bowls from Target that I already had at my house to use for molds and they didn't turn out the best kind of because there's ribs on the bowls. I don't know if you can see that. I did one on top of the bowl and actually this one turned out pretty good. It's pretty flat. I had to sand it down and I might use it for a tray. I haven't decided yet. And then this one I did inside the bowl. It's nice and flat. It just doesn't really have any kind of like lip to it, which isn't a bad thing. It's just not the type of tray I was going for. So then I headed to my favorite place, the thrift store, and I found a couple of different trays slash bowls that I thought would make a good mold for a tray. So that was... Huh. Oh, okay, so actually, this one was for this bowl. I thought it was for the other one, but it's a little too flat with not enough curved edges on it. I think that if I would have made the slab of clay a little bigger, it might have turned out well. This one I thought was like the perfect size for a tray. It was seeming to all go well. I thought it was sitting perfectly flat, but it wasn't. I think this would be a great tray if it was totally flat. This little dish was probably the best because sculpting it on the outside tends to work better to keep the tray actually flat and the slab just flat without bubbling. I used gesso to cover up the imperfections inside. It's the flattest and smoothest tray I had. So if you're wanting to make one of these jewelry trays, I'd recommend sculpting it around the outside of something. It tends to be easier. If you can make sure it's flat, a dish like this might work as well. A watermelon actually sounds really good right now. I thought I'd try it before it melts and without anything on it. What? That's actually really good. Mmm. Mmm. I don't think it needs anything. I've seen people put like salt and honey and like lemon on it, but. Mm. It's really good. I mean, it tastes like you would expect it to taste like frozen watermelon, but there's just something about it. It's like really refreshing.
I honestly had so much fun sculpting this little watermelon themed tray and eating frozen watermelon for the first time. Delicious, highly recommend. If you've never tried it, you should definitely try it. It's pretty good. And also, if you've never sculpted a jewelry tray before, I recommend that as well. I would say the hardest part is still getting the base of the jewelry tray. There were a little bit of challenges resoning. I kind of figured them out as I went along. So I definitely recommend resoning the outside of the tray first before you stick down any sculptures. As you saw, I didn't do that. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I just got really excited to stick them down and I was like, I'm ready. And I was like, oh crap, when I had to resin the, the bottom of the tray. I would also recommend cleaning your brush in between every resin session to keep any like dried, solidified resin off the actual piece and the new resin. I think I got a little bit of that on the bottom here. Um, it almost looks like bubbling, but I'm pretty sure it's like, extra pieces of resin that dried. Resining this took about five different sessions, I would say, so it took a while. And honestly, I might even do another one on the top of this head, because this head's not as smooth as I want it. I think he was just like so close to the light that the resin started to like separate on the top of its head. When a piece is taller or closer to the light, that's kind of what happens. This little UV light came in handy too. I used it for the walls of the tray, just so it wouldn't drip down the walls of the tray and stick to the floor of my little nail light that I resin under. After the initial dry and in the nail light and with this little light. I like to put the pieces outside for a couple hours, like two to three hours, until they don't smell anymore. So yeah, that's some stuff I learned from making this jewelry tray. Definitely one of the hardest pieces I've resin, but also most satisfying. I just had a lot of fun with this, honestly. I just kind of placed each piece where I thought it would look best and tried not to get too in my head about it and I think it turned out really well so I really appreciate you guys sticking around to the end you who do and watching this video and I will see you in the next video bye bye